Welcome back to Anchorage Football Stadium as we get ready to kick off the 2013 high school football season. Niver last year actually didn't even play the quarterback position for the Colony Knights. Last season he was their leading rusher for Colony. Rushed over, for five, rushed over 500 yards and had five touchdowns. Niver now throws a seam, pass complete to Summers. Got room to run, running over people. Still going down inside the 40 before he's finally wrapped up. Brings up third down and eight. They just converted about a third and 17 just a few seconds ago. Might want to take a look for Fisher Summers coming out of the backfield here. Billifer at the bottom of your screen had a big play just a few moments ago for the Colony Knights. Antonio Bush at the top. Niver in the shotgun. Hands it off up the middle. Not a lot of running room, but stretching out and picking up what he could was Logan Conway. And makes it fourth down and about six. And they're going to go for it here. They got the ball in kind of that gray area. Too long for a field goal, but too short for a punt. And they get service to jump. And guess who it is? The big fella. Welcome back to Anchorage Football Stadium. 4.16 to go in the first quarter. As Colony looking to find the first points here this evening. Keaton Homer, Rick Whitbeck along with you. Glad you could join us for live coverage of high school football on the Alaska Sports Channel as Niver has a first and 10 for the Colony Knights with the ball deep inside of service territory. Going to throw a fade up to the big fella, Bush! Caught it! And touchdown! Antonio Bush! 23-yard touchdown pass from Niver. Zoomer in the shotgun. Didn't start the opening possession for the service Cougars at quarterback, but now has Toomer to the end zone, caught! Six points, touchdown! As Johnson calls it in, and service. Answers with a quick strike of their own. And it looks like many of the backups for the service Cougars are in the game now. About to hit the seven minute mark. Patola looking to the sideline for the play. And he gets it, takes the snap, straight drop, looks left, fires to the corner of the end zone, and it is knocked away. Oh, Did, he caught. Did he catch it that? Are you kidding me? The ball was knocked away initially by Tyler Harvey. Monty Bibbs. We're going to have to see that again and again and again. What a way to get your first touchdown pass. Tipped, but Bibbs staying with the ball. Wow. Oh, heck. Yeah. Touchdown. That's beautiful, Monty Bibbs. Great concentration by Mr. Bibbs. Full house backfield behind Peter Cotton. Flags fly once again. Been a lot of penalties early on here in the first quarter. This flag came from the back judge. We'll see what see what it is here. And they pick up the up. flag. Timeout taken by Eagle River, actually. Take a look at the high snap here. As Jake Falualu in his own end zone, just trying to turn it into something. Well, at least he was able to catch the ball and get it out of the end zone. If that went over his head and rolled out of bounds in the end zone, that would have automatically been a safety. So, Ball spotted at the four-yard line. Seen my fair share of laundry today. Been a lot of it. Yeah. As Cott. Full house backfield. We'll hand it off. Ed Hall will get in the end zone easily. There's a flag down, though. We'll see what the penalty is. Ed Hall able to score on the four-yard touchdown run. We'll see what the penalty is. Balawalo in the Wildcats still. They've been in the Wildcat this whole series. This time he gives it off to Fa. Masino breaks tackles. Touchdown, West High Eagles. Louis Fa Masino puts the first points on the board for West. And it's shotgun, rolls out, had an open receiver, but tucks it and runs and keeps it himself. Stretches. Did he get in the end zone? Yes, he did. Tyrone Davis with the touchdown for the West High Eagles. So it gives Eagle River first and goal after the encroachment. From the four yard line, Cott puts Banks in motion. 
Toss it out left side. Banks trying to get the edge, and he does have it. That's going to be a walk-in touchdown for Eagle River. Second down and 10. Well, we continue with the Kenai Peninsula College pregame show here at Anchorage Football Stadium as we're in a little bit of a delay right now, experiencing some difficulties with the lights turning on, and obviously being this late in the year here in the state of Alaska, we kind of need those to kick on to play a little bit of football. So teams are still trying to stay warm. They put an extra 15 minutes on the clock after the clock went down to zero and still no lights have come on here at Anchorage Football Stadium. Even though it looks pretty nice on your t TV screen right now, it's pretty dark here at the, uh, at the stadium. So teams are trying to stay loose and trying to stay warm right now. And hopefully the lights kick on here in just a second. Keaton Homer, Skip Hurst, Heat Day along with you. Glad you could join us here on the Alaska Sports Channel for what promises to be one of the best games of the season. Right. Uh, they can do this all night. It's going to be a be a heyday for South. Valdez fumbles the football. The ball still loose, picked up. As Rayford in the right spot at the right time. One man to beat, and Valdez ends up tackling him. But West will bring out their field goal unit here as the first possession stalls out. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt for Davis Ortland. Good snap, hold down, and Ortland puts it up. He's got the distance right down the pipe. Davis Ortland puts the West High Eagles up 3-0 here in the opening quarter. 9.02 to go here in the first quarter, and the West High Eagles take a 3-0 lead. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're watching live coverage of high school football here on the Alaska Sports Channel. Davis in the shotgun, gets the snap off before the delay of game. Screen out to Leroy Elliott, blockers in front. Nobody's gonna touch Leroy Elliott as he gets into the end zone, touchdown. Davis will hand it off and Fa Messino is met in the backfield and loses yardage. I think there were six. There were six guys in the backfield South there. players in the backfield on that one. Nice job by South getting some penetration and, and able to bring down Fa Messino. Uh, for a loss, which, as you just said, Skip, doesn't happen too often. 5.45 remaining here in the first quarter. It's second down and 12 now after the two-yard loss by Fa Messino. Davis stands in the shotgun, four wide receiver set. Davis looking right, comes back left down the sideline, has Rayford! What a catch! Oh Rayford my. untouched! Touchdown! And it is a fake. West going to keep it. West looking for running room. He's got to get to the 20. He's not even to come close. Had to get to the 20. Great and West was stopped well short of the line of gain. And Rayford was the first man to get there to cut off Andrew West. And a turnover on downs. And West will bring their offense back out into the field. They have scored on their first three possessions of the game. Wildcat, Leroy Elliott's in the backfield at quarterback here. And I was going to say, you got to watch who comes out on quarterback He's for West. He's thrown it one time this year. Mm -hmm. Elliott took it 80 yards to the house last week, and he almost fumbles the exchange with Fa Messino, Ooh. but Louie able to hang on to it and bulldoze his way for a pickup of eight yards. Davis looks left, fires, pass complete to Rayford. First down, Rayford. Gets out to the 39-yard line. Actually, they give him forward progress out to the 40. We'll see if South can get on the board here. It'll be a 29-yard field goal attempt. Tyler Kyle to hold, low snap, gets the hold down, it's Block. blocked. And, and it's gonna, gonna be, be returned by Fa Messino. He's got blockers out in front. As he gets out across the 50. Got the block and a good return out of it as well. That's going to do it for our broadcast here this evening. The West High Eagles win 23 to nothing. For my broadcast partners tonight, Heath Day, Skip Hurst, myself, Keaton Homer. Until next Saturday out at Tom Huffer Senior Stadium when the Mustangs take on the Bartlett Golden Bears, we bid you adieu from Anchorage Football Stadium. Final home game of the regular season for the UAA men as they get ready to take on the number two team in the nation. The Western Washington Vikings coming off of a loss on Thursday night for the first time in 30 games. UAA has been hot here in the month of February. We'll see if they can keep it going here this evening against a very, very tough Western Washington Vikings squad. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Wells Fargo Sports Complex for the Wells Fargo pregame show. Alongside my broadcast partner once again, Rick Whitbeck, Keaton Homer along with you. Rick, tonight's game should be exciting, should be fun, and it should be a great way to end out the regular season here at the Wells Fargo.
Take a look at what the Western Washington did on Thursday night against UAF. Of course, John Allen, what a performance he had. 33 points and 11 of 22 shooting, but everybody else relatively quiet for Western Washington. Welcome back inside the Wells Fargo Sports Complex. Both teams still in the locker room getting ready to tip off tonight's action. We'll have the introductions for the three seniors tonight. Let's take a look at Keaton's keys to success here this evening. Same as Thursday night. Bench production, it wasn't really, it wasn't really there other than Jalen Little coming off the bench and dropping 19 points for the Seawolves. Seawolves had 21 points coming off the bench. Jalen Little had 19 of those. Get off to a fast start. If you can get off to a fast start tonight against Western Washington, get this home crowd into it here tonight. They'll be in a good, good spot. Be physical with those guys down low. Liam Gipkis, Ababe, Demisi, everybody today have to, have to be physical and wanting to take the physicality to Western Washington. Fans, be sure you check out the alaskasportschannel.com. You can find broadcast schedules of upcoming games and also check out live streaming of high school sports all at the alaskasportschannel.com. 7.25 to go here in the first half. A six-point lead for the Vikings, 20 to 14. UAA, six of 13 from the field, seven of 13 is Western Washington so far here in the first half. Since we are at halftime, Seawolves trail 32-25 to Western Washington. As the UAA cheerleaders out on the floor right now, putting on a show for the fans. We have a special guest here in the house tonight, the commissioner of the GNAC Conference, Dave Haglin. Glad you could join us here. Well, thank you very much. Happy to be here. All right. Well, how was the how was the flight up here? I guess you went up to Fairbanks first and check out their campus. Well, yeah, I uh, went up Thursday night and saw the uh, Western Washington Fairbanks game and the, the big upset uh, for Fairbanks, and then flew over uh, this afternoon. Uh, so had a good flight and uh, been a great visit up here. So, so far, uh, I'm sure you've got a chance to tour the UAA campus and check out the new sports complex that's going up. What, have you got, what do you think about that new sports complex, multi-million dollar facility? Well, it's uh, just going to be fabulous. Uh, the athletic director, Steve Cobb, took me over there today. I took a few photos, and um, it's just going to be great for, for not only University of Alaska Anchorage, but the whole GNAC. It's just uh, going to be wonderful and a great recruiting tool, uh, something the whole, all of Alaska can take pride in. I know you've only been on the job for maybe a little over a year now. What do you like about being the commissioner of the GNAC conference so far? Well, this is just a great conference. Uh, I was able to see it uh, from afar a little bit in my previous role. Uh, great people in this conference, great institutions. Um, and as you've seen tonight, we've got some great basketball in this league too. What have, uh, what have you um, looking forward to come tournament time? I'm sure you're going to be uh, down at the conference tournament. Always an exciting time down there. Well, it is, and uh, working hard on preparing for that championship. Uh, so both free throws knocked down by Austin Bragg, a four-point lead for Western Washington, 14-13 to go here in the first half as Stafford hands it off to Fossman. Stafford, top of the key. Now McKelvey, 17 seconds on the shot clock as we're under 14 minutes to play here in the first. Stafford with it, gives it up. Now McKelvey drives right, baseline, nice move, goes up, can't get the layup to go, ball loose on the floor, McKelvey catches it. McKelvey will give it up to Lowers now. So a couple of offensive rebounds here in the early going for the Seawolf. Fossman hands it off to Mike McKelvey. And now Colton Lowers has the ball in his hands. Stafford on the right side gives it up. McKelvey swing it over to the left wing. And Lowers, Fossman top of the key on the drive. Floater in the lane. A lot of contact. No foul. Stafford able to tip it into the backcourt to Colton Lowers for another offensive rebound. What a hustle play by Tiankum Stafford. Little. Comes off the screen from Spickerman. Jalen, nice feed into Spickerman! Send it in, pull it! John Allen with some big shots for the Vikings, no doubt about it, there in that first half as we, uh, let's take a look at the first half stats. Seawolves, 11 of 23 from the field. Western Washington, 12 of 21. 
there in the first half. Three-point shooting, not a huge factor for either team. Seawolves two of six from behind the arc, three of eight for Western Washington from behind the three-point line. Five turnovers for UAA, two turnovers for Western Washington. Both teams taking care of the ball pretty well. Jones, ball stolen away by McKelvey. McKelvey in transition as a shot blocked by Jones from behind. Put back no good, count it in one for Leo. 55 all, a minute 40 to go. Coming down to the wire. Stafford on the right wing. Trying to feed it into Liam, but nothing doing there. Good defense by Mitchell. Lowers, top of the key, eight seconds. Stafford on the drive, contact, hits it up the glass and in! As the senior to serve for UAA, and Viato gets it over. On the serve, tipping it over that front line is Davidson. Sea Wolves are ready though. Here's Sarah Johnson. Ross gets the kill for the Saints. Saints out in front as DeCosta serving. Julia Mackey going down the line, but a good dig on the other end. But the Sea Wolves able to pick up the point. And it draws UAA to within one at 24-23 and a timeout called by the Saints. Kari Starbuck thought it was gonna be long, but it dropped right on that back line for Jafruti. And the Seawolves draw to within a point at 24-23. St. Martins enters this match in the eighth spot in the GNAC. There's seven games behind Central Washington who is in first place. Or Western Washington, excuse me. Western Washington 15 and two overall, eight and one in the conference. She Wolves, don't see them again until November 1st and that match is on the road.